Hi, and thanks very much for joining me. I'm Dean the Vaping Biker, and today we've got something a little bit different for you. It's another interview, and this time it's with Brandon from Evolve. Now, I'm very excited to do this one because if you haven't been vaping for that long, you may not be aware of the significance that Evolve with their DNA boards have had on the vaping landscape, so to speak. Um, so it's very, very exciting to look at a little bit more of the company, but it's also exciting because we will be looking at the replay function, which is coming up. Now, I've talked about this in my my last Monday Night Live as well as on various live streams that I've done and I'm super excited about this new aspect of the technology because it's not just temp control it's actually adjusting the power in order to help you get the type of vape the flavor of vape that you're going out and looking for now this is quite a lengthy video I did want it to be a little bit shorter but sadly I think we covered quite a lot of kind of pretty interesting topics so what I will do down below is I will make sure that I put timestamps for kind of the pertinent aspects so you can go and check those out if you don't want to watch the full video but uh, hopefully for those of you that do you'll find something pretty interesting so before further ado let's get straight into it thank you very much to Brandon for this one and uh, I hope you guys enjoy it leave your comments as always down below alrighty Come on then. So now we get the opportunity to have a chat with Brandon from Evolve and let you guys know a little bit more about not only the DNA 250C, but also a little bit more about Evolve as a company. If you've joined into vaping over the recent kind of year or two, you may not have known very much about Evolve and the DNA ranges and know the sort of significance that uh, that they've had in the vaping industry. So it's going to be a little bit more about the company, but also we're going to be talking about the brand new DNA 250 50 C um, with the particularly with the replay function, which I'm very excited to uh, go over. If you saw my last Monday Night Live, you'll know that I, I like this a lot. So, before we begin, thank you very much indeed, Brandon, for joining us. You're welcome. And Happy for those here. people that don't know who you are or much about Evolve, do you want to give us just a brief kind of introduction to you and uh, and the company? Yeah. Uh well, I'm Brandon with Evolve. I'm one of the two owners uh, of Evolve. The other is John Bellinger. Um, and we started in 2010. Um, we introduced a mod back in 2010 called the Darwin. Yeah. And the Darwin um, was the first mod to use wattage instead of voltage to control yeah. output. Um, it seemed like the better way to do it. Um, because uh, realistically with a voltage mod we were always trying to calculate for wattage anyway so yeah. why not have a why not have a device that calculated wattage and kept a very steady um, wattage output um, but we are a company that is uh, we're, we're a technology company uh, first and foremost yeah. uh, we are probably best known for our DNA well definitely best known for our DNA um, control circuit boards that we sell to manufacturers who put into high end, yes. well, high end and some mid range, um, e-cigarettes. Yeah. Um, we were the first to do temperature control mm -hmm. on an e-cigarette and, uh, now replay. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's a very abbreviated, uh, history, but, uh, but yeah, that gives you the gist. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So, I mean, when it comes to the DNA the DNA line, obviously, um, old school vapors will know about the fact that that for quite some time, Evolve seemed to kind of hold back on the on the on the power on getting that kind of higher wattage out there. Um, was there anything that kind of twisted that and and changed your mind on that one, or was it just you could see that that's where the uh, that's where the industry was going? Well, I, you know, when we brought out the DNA twenty. Um, Everybody's like, oh, 20 watts. Um, <laughs> we brought out the DNA 30. Oh, 30 watts. Uh, we brought out the DNA 40 with temperature control. Yeah. And um, then some of the um, some of the Chinese makers had put out 50 and 60 watts. So what we were seeing were consumables um, going to higher mass coils, uh, which required more power. Yeah. Um, and the the. I mean, I guess the DNA 200 a wee bit was a bit of thumbing our nose, you know, um, yeah. because I had read in a lot of places, oh, you know, the, the, you know, the, the, the wattage guys are getting out foxed by the Chinese manufacturers. And, and so we, we just kind of took it over the top with the 200. Um, yeah. 
And it was the it was the two hundred that then brought in the the eScribe software as well, right? That's correct. Yeah, we introduced eScribe, and what we wanted to do with eScribe was give the user um, controls that to that point only manufacturers had. Yeah, um, they could control the entire um, you know all parameters of the e-cigarette, in you know all the stuff that the 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 manufacturers saw in the background. We now opened up to the user so yes. that they could uh, they could make those changes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, and that that is something that, that allowed the tinkerer or the, the the sort of hobbyist that likes getting involved with all the sort of the geeky aspect of things to to really kind of get involved with and really get into the nuts of things. And obviously, I said I think I remember that with the DNA two hundred, there was a lot of people that would have to look at the uh, the battery analyzer and all that sort of stuff, which was great for being able to get the best out of your batteries that you you were using. Right. And that was right. something that to that point was unheard of, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we opened up a lot there. I mean, we, we threw a lot at people uh, before it was whatever the manufacturer gave you, you were sort of stuck with. Um, yeah. And we gave them the ability to, to see how we treat batteries, see how, um, uh, you know, because the, one of the big things with Evolve is, you know, we've always been about solving the e-cigarettes. So, looking at the next thing that's going to get us, um, you know, as an alternative to smoking, you know, the, the we convert a lot of people, we want to convert all of them. Yes. Um, and so, the, you know, the closer we can get to that, the better off we are. And, you know, I've been asked many times, you know, why, why bring out eScribe? Why make it more complex for the user? And, and my argument there is from a, from a standpoint of, us telling you what you need, I think what eScribe did was it, it allowed the user to tell us what they wanted. Um, you know, if, if we watch what the users change uh, in, in eScribe and, and we looked at what, how they were, how they were setting up their, their systems, it gave us a much better idea of how these things were being used in the field. Yeah. Um, you know, from a standpoint of, of somebody who makes control circuitry, um, it, it, it's pretty important to know what your users want. Absolutely. And, Absolutely. And when, and when we opened it up with, you know, a lot of very, very smart guys came up with some, you know, we started to look at it, how they were setting up their devices and, and so forth. And, and we learned a lot. Um, yeah. You know, so, how, but, how are people actually using these boards? Because I mean, we could be going in a direction uh, that, you know, may not be appealing to anyone. Yeah. So whilst whilst being able to give the end users something that was kind of ultimately customizable to exactly how they wanted it to perform, it also allowed you to develop as a company by mm -hmm. shaping what future projects were going to look like. Exactly, exactly, and and, yeah. and that that was really uh, you know it, there was a lot of why nodding at that time. You know, it's it's like, well, should we should we give them control over this? Should we give them control over that? Should we allow? Should we show this? You know, should we show these areas of uh, you know, there were there were once uh, only things you talked to about with manufacturers, and we said, you know, why not? Why not? I mean, and most of the people using these devices, uh, especially you know on the enthusiast side, uh, they're very smart guys. I mean, these are very smart people that, that you know these none of these concepts were beyond them. No, um, no and we saw some really you know we saw some really cool stuff come out of the, uh, come out of that. And that that sort of techno technology sort of aspect is that something is that an industry that you were in prior to evolve? Then was that something, or have you developed that along the years? Well, John had Dimension Engineering, which was a uh, which was a company that um, made uh, made power electronics for the RC industry, for robotics, um, for a number of different industries, okay. and that's how we met. Um, I was a twenty year smoker. I wanted to. I wanted something. I had bought a like this was two thousand end of two thousand eight, beginning of two thousand nine. I had bought a, um, I think it was a Joy, um, you know, just a little Sigalike, and yeah, yeah. I, I thought this is good, but it's not that good. Um, it's not good enough, maybe. Yeah. Um, I had I had limited skills in that area, so I went looking for someone um, who had much greater skill than I did in the, uh, you know, in, in electro, you know, in electrical engineering. And I found John who just happened to be local and I beat on his door and beat on his door and beat on his door because at that time he had a very, you know, he still does have a very successful, you know, the dimension engineering side. Um, 
and you know he really didn't want to talk to me about it but uh, i finally <laughs> was convinced him though or did it you did you just no come- no john's never been a vapor so you just um, rocked up to a guy and went you're super intelligent i need you to do this vaping thing and then had to deal with him going really though well, is it going to take off <laughs> well what i did was i presented him with a uh, a project yeah um you know, and he gave me the the price to do what I wanted done. And I about had a heart attack. And, uh, you know, so then it went into trying to convince John to, to come on as a partner. Yeah. And, uh, and he did, uh, in the end I, I won out. Um, but the only reason I won out, uh, well, besides being just dogged about not <laughs> leaving him alone was, uh, this was an interesting space. You know, there wasn't a lot happening uh, from a technology side. It was a very new industry. Um, there were a lot of things left unsolved. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, and that's how Evolve got started. Gotcha. And that's obviously taking us to kind of where, where we're at right now with regards to um, continually trying to improve that technology. Correct. which is why we have something um, which is called the replay. Now, like I said, that uh, I, I showed this in my last vlog. And I've been absolutely stunned by it. Um, do you want to, before I kind of you know, go on about uh, my experience with it, um, which, <laughs> which has been fabulous, by the way, um, do you want to let people know kind of where the idea came from? Because obviously it's kind of a, um, a development from temp control. So where, where did this come from and where were you going with it? What was your focus um, as far as the business goes with this, with this kind of tech? Okay, well, it, it's really simple. Uh, of DNA users, the, 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 we know this for a fact. Um, 10% of DNA users use temperature control all the time. Okay. 20% use it some of the time. The other 80% don't ever use it. Um, so what we did was we went, we went and asked. We simply asked people, you know, of which couple were even our own employees, weren't using temperature control. People that work at Evolve not using temperature control. And we asked them why. Um, two answers, fiddly, you know, it's yeah. very fiddly. Uh, the second answer was, it makes my juice taste different. So we looked at that because we, you know, it was one of those things that, why does it make your juice taste different? Um mm-hmm. We, you know, if, if we're, if we're, if we're truly on a crusade to solve the e-cigarette, we ought to know why, yeah. you know, why would, why would a flat temperature cause the, uh, cause it to taste differently? And, uh, what we found were that juice flavors volatilize at, you know, when you, when you use a wattage and especially with a high mass coil, you sort of heat the, heat the juice on a curve almost, um, you know, kind of heading up and then it stabilizes and and out. And, you know, if you have a flavor like let's say vanilla, which is an overwhelming flavor, but you have let's say a pineapple vanilla, uh, the pineapple may be volatilizing at an early point in the vape and the vanilla may be volatilizing, uh, later, but it overwhelms the pineapple. So with temperature control, what you got was this sort of bam temperature. So you're at vanilla right away. And, you know, you've lost all the pineapple flavor. You've lost all this. You've lost all that. Um, so what we wanted to do was come up with something that it's, it's certainly not temperature control, but something more to the qualitative side of vaping, something that would make it um, um, good all the time. Okay. Um, okay. And it, it, we, you know, we have all this, this tech, all this ability within the within the devices so we started to look at well what what can we do what can we build and this was this was some time ago i mean uh you know we've sort of been sitting on a lot of technology because we've been working on fda things for the last couple of years and uh you know we sort of fallen behind in that way but these were all things that we that we did get out get on the market before august 8th um so you know from a from a u.s standpoint that was very important so we sort of had this two-year pipeline of technology that we had to push out but you know back to replay um, you know, this came out of that sort of thinking. Um, why aren't people using temperature control? It's not temperature control. Um, it, it, it goes to, you know, it goes to, uh, flavor more than anything. 
Um, okay. So, I mean, what I'll do now is I'll try and remember an, an overlay, just a, a kind of a, a look about uh, about the, the sort of the board display, um, mm-hmm. because when you're in, uh, in in the replay mode, before you've done anything, what you'll do is you'll you'll vape on it until you get to a point where you're thinking, yes, I really enjoy the flavour, I really enjoy the the heat, or the, the the actual whole vape is is something you're happy with at that point you then will click on the uh you'll then click on the save puff and then that will keep that setting internally is that correct that is correct yeah so. well yeah yeah because what, what, what we noticed were people were using you know even me i mean you know i vape a lot i vape all day long all the time uh, yeah. like i said i was a heavy smoker two packs a day um and one of the things i do with my tanks you know i'll pick up a tank you know, I have a million around here. I always have like four devices going, but you know, I'll be using it and and you'll get that hit and you're just like, Oh my God, I wish it always tasted like that. Yeah. I just wish it always tasted like, (laughs) you know, you may be 30 puffs into a tank and you're like, wow, that was, you know, that, (laughs) that one, it just the flavor, everything was good. Um, And so once you get that, you know, whether it is you're using a high mass coil And it takes you three puffs to get up to temperature, you know, to get up to where it really starts to taste good. You're using a dripper. So you drip in it, you're, you hit it once, you're like, "Eh," you know, hit it twice. You're like, Ooh, that's better. Hit it the third time. Once you lock that in, um, replay will give you that same, that same puff. So that third puff into a dripper or that 30th puff into a new coil on a, you know, on a commercial coil, um, it will give you that same flavor. So it's really up to the user to decide, you know, you pick, you know, you pick what you like best and, you know, once you pick it, it's sort of like putting the, the device on autopilot. It yeah, just, so when it, it just takes to, over and works. When it comes to the technology that, that, that is incorporated here, then obviously the, 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 the thing that people are going to relate it to is just temp control without any of the mess. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, what, the way this was going to work, this does work to some degree off the off the, the changing of resistance of the of the metal in the coil. So we're looking at oh, stainless absolutely. steel, titanium, absolutely, and, and nickel, um, or or any combination thereof. Yeah, or, absolutely, absolutely. Or I mean, I'm rocking. Or, yeah, um, yeah, I'm rocking Clapton's at the minute with Canthal around the outside um, right. and having a, a splendid time. And the, the, the greatest thing that I've found with this is the fact that um, I'm getting all of the benefits, great flavour, great um, kind of constant power, if you like, and mm-hmm. no dry hits without having to worry about TCRs, without having to worry about temperature, without having to do any of that business. I just get right. the vape, I set the wattage to where I want it to be, vape mm-hmm. it a couple of times and go, boom, yes, safe puff. Right. So can you tell us any more? I mean, you say that, that it's not temp control per se. So what what are we looking at? What is the kind of the, the technology involved with this one? <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> that's, a, <laughs> that's, a, that's a much longer discussion. Um, you know, w- when we do these things, uh, well, well, with with this, we're looking at a number of different things. I mean, is is the rise in resistance one of the things we're looking at, of course? Um, you know, uh, but we were looking at a number of other things too, that we found that affected flavor, you know, in the, um, in the puff yeah. and, you know, being able to duplicate that accurately, you can't just, you know, you, you can't just work off of one parameter. You have to work that, off of a lot of different parameters. Would that and, also include things like, sorry to butt in there, but would that also mm-hmm. include things like ramp up time? Because what I've noticed is it, 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 it fires quickly. Yes, it does. And so it's um, straight on the button. And it's like you've got to that point where I've purged a coil and I've got that nice warm vape, but it's right. pretty much there straight away. Yeah, it, yes, that, uh, that's part of it. Um, yeah, I mean, if you if you watch this, even in eScribe, I mean, you can open up eScribe and watch and, and look at what it's doing, you know, check some of the boxes on the left and, and look at what it's doing. It's, it's, uh, it's doing a lot of work behind the scenes. The beauty of this technology is you don't have to like again you don't have to worry about material you don't have to you know there's no temperature to set there's no fiddling with it you know you just find a puff you like you adjust it in wattage just like you would any other wattage um thing you adjust it you you click save puff and it and replay takes over yeah um but yes are there are there a number of things that we're looking at yeah um you know i, I don't like getting too lost in that because um you know i find that 
really the, the the thing that blows people away about this technology is the fact that it is so simple to use. There's no, yes. you know, there's, <laughs> I mean, you've shown the screen, I think. Absolutely. Um, you know, there's just one button on the screen, and as soon as it tastes good, you you, you simply click it. Um, yeah. I mean, you know, are, are, are there, is there a whole bunch of stuff going on in the background that's that's very fancy and very tech? Yes. Oh my goodness, yes. And it took a long <laughs> time to get it right. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, but but what it you know what it's trying to do every single time is give you that same puff, that one that you liked. Yeah. Um, you know, so it's not us making a decision about what you should be doing. It's you making a decision about what you like, which I think is the right way to do it. Yeah. And it's obviously it's really, it's taking away. It's like the temp control aspect with regards to taking away the potential of of, of dry puffs. I mean, I've, I've shown this on multiple occasions now to various people or at various streams of being able to just bake my face off. And it just seems to seek out the, the last bits of juice out of a, out of a, a, a bit of wick. So you still yes, get... Does. Now, obviously, that that vape will drop because you're you're getting less less juice in there, so it doesn't want to burn the wick. So that's fine. That's correct. Um, that's correct. But it's still trying to give you even even when it gets down to that point, it's still trying to give you as much flavor as it can. Absolutely. Um, and. Uh, you mentioned about the the wires in there. Now, at the moment, obviously, we've got stainless titanium and Ni two hundred. Am I right in thinking that you're working on trying to develop this further for N80 as well? Um, uh, no, I wouldn't say we're trying to develop it for N80. Um, it, it's, you know, I, I've had mixed reviews. Um, there are some things that work very well. I would say N80, uh, you know, I've not tried it personally, but, you know, I've gotten everything from I just put N80 in a dripper and it works great to, yeah. oh, my God, that didn't work at all. Um yeah. I mean, the TCR for, uh, you know, that's really because it is such a flat wire. It's, it's very close to Canthal in that way, in that yes. it doesn't rise very much. So there's not much to look at on, on that end. Some of the other parameters the, 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 that we're looking at, the DNA does try to keep up. And, um, but it's, you know, you're pulling one, one parameter out of uh, multiples that you look at. And if you really want, if you really want replay to, uh, to work the way it was intended, uh, you know, yeah. where it can see all parameters and, and adjust to those parameters very quickly. Um, you really want to use something like stainless, um, you know, or stainless Canthal or, you know, uh, like the, yeah. 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 So uh, it, it helps, um, you know, like I, like I was telling somebody else, you can make it work with, especially with commercial, commercial Canthal coils, um, because commercial Canthal coils have the coil yeah. and then they put uh, what they call a non-resistance wire, which just happens to be nickel. Almost yeah. every Canthal coil on the market that's a commercial coil has two nickel legs coming off of it. So, uh, you know, we can look at that, but the, the problem with that is that those nickel legs are surrounded continuously by juice, whereas the coil has air on one side, juice on the other. Yeah. Um, so it tends to heat up much quicker because it's exposed to air rather than having a this nice insulation of juice. So, um, so it's, it's okay. It works. Um, and what we're going to do on our website is put out a list of commercial coils that are currently available that are okay. sort of replay, replay ready. Um, and I'm not sure exactly how we're going to do it yet. Uh, we, we sort of have to do this quickly because we're, you know, obviously this is releasing. Uh, I imagine you're going to see products on the market here within a week yeah, um, yeah well, we've seen we've i think boxer are working on it lost vapor working on it right um, i don't know any other sort of larger companies that are throwing out kind of mass manufactured products with that as yet mm -hmm. but there will be more I'm, I'm sure right right um but we're gonna have a list of you know at least commercially available coil heads and how they work what we did was we just went out and bought oh you know a ton of you know, we try to stick with the, the stuff that's popular now, the stuff that was popular before. Uh, mostly just looked at availability and, uh, you know, and, and I'd kind of like to do it in a, these, these work great. These work yeah, good. Uh, and these don't work at all. Yeah. Um, yeah like you know, and, and like I said, I, I'm on a big push with the consumables manufacturers uh, to at least take a look at the way they're doing this and, and, you know, think about, you know, for these guys, they're only putting out Canthal coils. Yeah. Uh, the mesh guys, some of the, uh, some of the other guys to at least consider putting out a titanium 
replacement coil for some of these tanks, especially the more popular ones. Yeah. Um, if, if they're not already available, a lot of them are already have, uh, you know, stainless coils or titanium coils or nickel coils. Um, but, um, but yeah, I mean, you know, we'll see where it goes. Uh, I, I think that'll, that'll depend on, you know, how well the technology is received. I mean, I'm a, I, I was a dye in the wool temperature vapor until, yeah. until replay. Okay. And, uh, you know, for me, <laughs> I don't use temperature anymore. I'm always <laughs> using, I'm always using this. <laughs> so, one of the, one of the uh, things you know. I think is going to be very cool with this. And have you guys kind of had any, any, any thoughts about maybe a starter device, maybe a device that sort of new, new users can use? Obviously, there's not a 250C, but using this replay technology, because one of the challenges that a new beginner often has is they'll vape burnt coils because they don't really understand what they're doing or they don't right. really understand how they're vaping. So, you know, have you guys thought about that kind of new entry into vaping and using this tech in that kind of aspect? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's that is uh, that that falls rather um, right in this right squarely into our plan. Um, you know, like I said, because because in the U.S., you know, we were sort of you sort of had this August eighth, two thousand sixteen date. Um, mm. You know, and when that came about, we were somewhat prepared for it because we knew something was coming. We didn't exactly know how it was going to be structured, but you know, we're always working a couple, um, you know, a cup at least a year out, if not a year and a half out, on technology because. You know, being a technology company and, and, you know, people are always like, well, why does Evolve stuff cost a lot? Because we, you know, most of, most of what we do is automated, but when you're an, inno you know, when you're innovating, you may walk down, you know, you may have eight great ideas and you yeah. may spend a lot of time and a lot of money on, on eight, you know, eight great ideas, but only one of them is going to be viable. You know, after you get, you know, you may, you may spend three months thinking this is a great idea, try it, do different things. And it just doesn't work. Yeah. Um, so then you move on to the next thing and you have to be able to just drop things, but it's, it's, you know, it's costly. It's costly in, 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 you know, in time and money and resources. So, uh, you know, from, from a standpoint of, of, um, <laughs> you know, are we going to do some of these things? Yes, we have a, we have an entire pipeline right now yeah. of which this is the first thing that we're sort of putting out there that we're on the market pre-August, you know, pre-August 8th, 2016 that are coming. Um, is part of that aimed at smokers? Oh my God. Yes. A big part of that is aimed at smokers Excellent. Excellent. and people, so really, people new to this. Yeah, that's, I think that's, that's a real strong place in the market for, for this kind of tech because it right. is so much easier than temp control that we've seen in the past. So I think that, mm -hmm. that could be excellent. Um, so, I mean, with, re with regards to that sort of cost side of things, we've, we, you sort of addressed that already saying that there's a lot in the lead up to it. For instance, with this, just the replay function, have you got any idea how long just that aspect has taken to develop and how many people have been involved in that process? Got a long time. Um, a long time. You know, we've got, um, I would say, I mean, it's hard to say because, you, you know, you are working on different things at the same time, but I, yeah. uh, it, it, it took us a long time to get that together. I would say that's, John started working on that and it was for, it, the funny thing is about replay came from another, um, another thing that we were doing for, uh, at that time, National Institutes of Health um, here in the U.S. Okay. And it sort of, it sort of sprang from that, which was, oh God, you know, um, I would say that on and off, we've been working on this for a year and a half. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I, you know what, well, prior to the August 8th, you know, I mean, it was, <laughs> you know, this, you're we talking all the way back to 15, you know, maybe even into 14. Yeah. So, yeah. And that's, um, that's a hellish foresight, isn't it? I mean, to think kind of how things are going to go in, in kind of two years' time, three years' time, that's 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 mm -hmm. amazing to kind of plan your business in that respect. So well, how big is Evolve to. now? Do you have a, just a, a crap ton of people working for you? Is it a massive company or have you got kind of a small core group of people? Uh, we have a small development team. Yeah. Uh, but that's, you know, uh, we have, I don't, I don't even know how many engineers, five, six. Um and then we, we have 22 total 
employees. Um, we have two locations. Uh, just this past year, we opened up an R&D facility in Pittsburgh, uh, Pennsylvania. We're in Ohio, okay. um, which the two states are right next to each other. Um, so we're about the, the, the actual manufacturing facility, which is where, where I am, and the uh, R&D facility, which is where John and the engineers are, uh, are separated by about a two-hour drive. But yeah, um, um, yeah, um, yeah, no, I mean, from a, from a total number of employees standpoint, we grew a lot in 15 and 16. We really haven't added uh, any since then. We have a lot of, you know, a lot of what we do is, is based in automation and process. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, trying to keep the cost down, the best way to do that is to automate. Um, yes. So we don't, we don't have, I, I would say the employees we have are very highly skilled employees. Yes. Um, you know, they're not, it's not like China where you just have rows and rows of people because it's cheaper than machines. Yeah. So here we have lots of, you know, robots. That, uh, and they are, make they are manufactured, ma manufactured, manufactured <laughs> in the States there rather than kind of offloading the concept uh, like to, uh, to, to China or wherever. Absolutely. Uh, every, every DNA board is made in Ohio absolutely. in the USA. Fantastic. Okay, good stuff. Um, so, I mean, with with regards to the replay, obviously that is a that is a massive thing that uh, that, that is phenomenal. I'm I'm really enjoying using it. I think it works really really well, and I think it does do a grand job. And I'm looking forward to seeing that in more products. But also, we've got that kind of much larger expanse of wattage available to us now as well, depending on the amount of right. cells that you have. Um, so, obviously, at the start, we talked about kind of the the, the DNA twenty fives and the forties and so on. Um, mm -hmm. And now we're kind of potentially all the way up to 400 watts with uh, with like a 4S lipo pack or something <laughs> along those lines, which is you know ridiculous. So I mean, what what it was is. the thoughts behind that? Well, uh, it's it's actually part of replay. Uh, you know, you need a little bit of headroom uh, with uh, the way that replay works. Um, you were saying you know you don't have to do the the primer puff or the clearing puffs, uh, things like that. So it's it, part of that is needing that extra headroom. Um, uh, you don't need 400 watts for what <laughs> you and I are doing, way. but yeah, but I mean, you know, we could do it. So why not? Um, it's, uh, it will actually do 400 watts. Um, that's, you know, we've, we've tested even this little, you know, using this small, uh, lipo, this small 4S lipo, Yeah, it will, it will output 400 watts. Um, nobody's, <laughs> at least nobody we know has been able to vape that high. Um, you, I mean, you would need a pretty massive, you know, coil to do that. Uh, I, I can't, I can't say we didn't try, but we, <laughs> we had no success. <laughs> the highest I could get, uh, honestly, the highest I could get was about 300. And it was a, you know, I mean, it, this was a, uh, I don't know, some commercially available gigantic, yeah. um, you know, RTA. <laughs> that's bonkers and also i guess it future proofs you to some degree as well so you know with regards to kind of other other aspects that you look at in the future you're, you're sure. never going to need to go past 400 watts are you no it, you know 400 is a, is a bit excessive <laughs> <You know? laughs> but every time i say that i've been wrong so you know, you know somebody's going to try it at some point yeah, exactly well you know what, what happens is and i think hardware drives this and I, I think we found that out when we brought up the 200 because at that point there had been no 200s. Um, I'm not even sure how much over 100 people had gotten, but or at least I don't think there had or one that actually put out 200. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Um, and, and and a lot of times I think the hardware sometimes drives the consumable. Um, not sure it ought to be yeah. like that, but I think that's you know. So you know, now that we have a 400 watt or a 300 watt, you know, will there be consumables that come up to match it? I you know you know your your lungs have a fixed capacity. I don't think. You know, because remember, wattage goes directly to vapor volume. Um, yeah. So, you know, at 400 watts, that's an enormous amount of vapor volume in a very, very short amount of time. Absolutely. So, you know, so given could could you make something that's vapable at 400? Yeah, but is it vapable for more than about a quarter second? I'm not really sure. And it would be kind of pointless. I mean, what we're finding out now with the sort of larger mass coils that are out there, um, mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, people spend all this time making these very nice aliens and, and mm -hmm. whatever else. Um, right. It's They do need that extra juice, but they don't necessarily need, you know, crazy amounts, but they do need way more than they used to back in the day, yeah? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, you know, but to what end? Um, you know, if, if we're always going for the better flavor, the bigger cloud, 
Um, certainly more wattage gives you more cloud. Um, but again, you're, you're dealing with a, you know, with a, with a fixed volume, uh, yeah. which are your lungs. So you're, you're not going to, unless you just want to get it a lot quicker. Um, also the larger coil masses tend to get, you know, less efficient. Because yes. you know you throw all this power into them to heat them up to get the to, to get the you know the e liquid to boiling and then at the moment you let off the button you lose you know you're losing all that that wattage you put in yes so um, you know they tend to be less efficient so they you know they chew through batteries much quicker yeah of so, course, of course. so there is a balance there somewhere I mean I you know I, I find myself uh, when I'm direct lunging I you know I, I typically mount the lung but uh, when I direct lung. Uh, which I've been doing a lot lately. Um, you know, I, I, I find myself between 50 and 70 is perfect for me. If I can find a tank or set up a, you know, or set up an RTA that, that runs between 50 and 70, that, that for me is just, you know, flavor yeah. heaven. 66.6 so. for the, for, for the win. That's, yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> I saw that in your video. <laughs> So obviously um, we've, we've covered that sort of replay aspect. We've covered a bit of the tech, mm -hmm. we've covered a bit of the company. Is there anything else we can look forward to with regards to eScribe? Or, um, I mean, obviously, we, we, you can access. Is it still the beta version on for Macs for for eScribe? Yeah, there's still there's still a uh, there's still an eScribe for Mac, and yeah. there, there will continue to be. I mean, now that we have the two branches, um, you know, you sort of have your PC and your uh, and your Mac. Absolutely, absolutely. Is there anything else we can expect to see with regards to that eScribe in the in the near future? Is there any further development of things that people should be aware of on that, or is that sort of just taken over as as it is for the for the time being? Uh, you know, I, I think we're we're continuously adding things to the software. Um, with each new technology, we you know you'll you'll see new things spring up in in eScribe that are you know give you a little bit of control over those those yeah. things even with replay i mean you know those guys that like to tinker there'll be some things in there that you yeah can, and you can is get. the replay available for the 75c yet not yet um you know we want to get the 250 out you know i want a smooth release of the 250 before we you know before we start pushing firmware on something else um yeah. and so yeah is it coming absolutely is it coming soon mm -hmm. I don't know. It depends on your definition of soon. Um, but, you know, everybody with a 75C will have this feature. Um, I'm hoping to get it out um, rather swiftly after after the, you know, everything we do, we sort of soft release because we're not a mod maker. Yeah. So we, 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 we sort of, we give these boards to the manufacturers and then we wait. We wait, yeah. you know, and we wait. And uh, so there's no it's tough for us because, you know, we love to hard launch things. Um, you know, I said after Chinese new year, well, nobody comes back from Chinese new year until Monday, this coming Monday. So, yeah. you know, are, are they going to come back ready to, you know, start putting these things together? You know, I hope that's why I said probably within the next week, you're going you're to start seeing these things roll out yeah. to shelves. But, um, you know, what, what I want is, is, you know, I want to watch, I want to make sure it's a smooth launch. I want to make sure, all of that goes not that we're not already working on the firmware for the for the 75c but that is uh that is definitely coming uh i can't give you an exact you know uh, an exact okay. day but you know the code bases are very similar for the 250c and the uh yeah. the 75c so yeah yeah, okay, cool. Well, I think that's going to be a fantastic upgrade for people with 75Cs at the moment, which is yeah. going to be which is going to be superb. Um, all right, great. I think we've covered the main aspects. Is there anything else that you wanted to say about either um, either Evolve or indeed the the the, the 250C itself? No, uh, you know, from a from a standpoint, I think you know we've covered everything. I I think this, you know, from a user standpoint, this is really going to change. Um, I hope it'll change the way people pay um, on things. And I, I, I hope it'll change some of the perception of um, fiddliness, just not just with temperature control, but just with vaping in general, because, uh, you know, if you can lock something in and have it just do the same thing every time and Absolutely. give you exactly the same flavor every time, I think that's a, I think that's a jump ahead. Uh, you know, yeah. it, it may be a qualitative jump ahead. So, you know, but, but it's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. 
Cool. But, well, that's brilliant. Yeah. Thank you very much. Well, I think we've got a, a strong understanding of this. I am, I'm still using this. I'm still testing the crap out of it. But I mean, I, I've had this now for oh, three days, four days, something like that. And I have been, I'm loving it. I, I've been having a great time as anybody that's, that's kind of seen any of my streams will, uh, will be aware of. And I'm really looking forward to, to seeing what mod makers are going to do with this, because obviously with this kind of technology now, we've got kind of, it just hopefully inspires mod makers to go, right, let's use some 2650 batteries. Let's use the larger cells. Let's kind of try and get what we can out of these, uh, out of these things and really kind of pump through um, the new tech with kind of some exuberance and some excitement because right. I think the industry has been a little bit stale for a little while now. Um, so it's good to see something exciting come out and kind of give everyone a, a swift kick up the arse, I think. Yeah, yeah, and we have, uh, you know, we have a number of things slated for release this year. So, um, this is just this is just the start. So. Excellent! Can't wait to see what else you got. So, thank you very much for that, then, Brandon. I appreciate your time, and uh, and hopefully the people that are watching have appreciated this as well. I think this will probably go a little bit longer than I planned, but uh, thank you so much for watching, and thank you very much for your time, uh, Mister Evolve. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs>